morning. So we begin, friends. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we give praise to the Father. He who is creator of all things. Source of life. We give praise. To his son, Jesus Christ. He who sought our salvation, who is Lord, to the Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts, who lives in us, moves, who moves us inspires us who dwells in us for in this moment and in every moment until eternity we give praise we praise you most blessed trinity our god We ask that you immerse us in your life, in your love, to renew us afresh again today as we come close. As we come to you, O Lord. To you who is always present to us. May we today be present to you. Bless our minds and hearts, bless our intentions. Our our souls, our abilities, our capabilities. Touch us, heal us with your grace. Move us to to love, to life. Bless our faith. May we grow today. May today be a great day of blessing, of renewal, of commitment, of intimacy with you, O Lord. May we prepare the way There is a line of scriptures, prepare ye the way of the Lord. From Isaiah, make straight his paths, prepare ye the way. Make straight his paths. Every valley raised, every hill laid low. The glory of the Lord is revealed, will be revealed. These words of the Old Testament 
I say were adapted, if you like, by John the Baptist, who fulfilled, brought to fulfillment those very words in the time of Jesus. Did he not share in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, repent. And believe. Make your hearts ready, convert. I was just thinking this morning of them. Um, <clears throat> You know, any any moment we we enter into prayer, as soon as we bless ourselves, as, as soon as we acknowledge God and invoke that spirit of God and enter into communication, it's in any shape, form, way, whatever it is. <laughs> Something is happening. You know, I am praying. Some days I won't pray well, other days I will. But I am essentially in prayer. And, you know, it is what Isaiah or John the Baptist is inviting us to, preparing the way of the Lord. We're we really are making straight the path for the Lord in his glory, for the glory of the Lord will be revealed. He is coming, the Lord is coming to us. We just have to make the space, prepare the way. And maybe the valley needs to be raised up. Maybe we need to intensify our our thinking or our prayers or maybe the, the mountain needs to be broken down maybe our ego has to be crushed a bit we have to humble ourselves there is a, always a work a preparation a preparation prepare ye the way and to bring it to St. John the Baptist, you know, there is a call to repentance, to make reparation for our faults. And it's an invitation to, to the desert. So just the very fact, you know, we're here half past six in the morning. Something is happening, whether we're tired or whatever we have to do or wherever we're going, we're here, we're praying, we're making an effort. We found this desert space of quietness. There's very little here in this silence. There's no distraction, it's a desert, it's a place of just this empty desolation place, desolate solitude. This is where the work has to be done. Go away by yourselves to a lonely place, Jesus said, and rest a while.
I believe the whole the whole purpose, the plan of God, uh, the intention of God for us always, always is to enkindle our faith, to renew that love in our hearts. But it begins with faith, it begins with re-establishing that relationship. So that's why we come to the Lord to listen to him, to open, to make the effort to come to his word, who is the source of life. We really come to drink because what happens in a desert, we get thirsty and the Lord allows us to get thirsty. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. He was hungry. He was thirsty and it it makes us go deeper where we that may be physical thirst and physical hunger but it because we're fasting today is a fast day today is a day to feel hunger but what it does is as we create this desert it makes us hunger for for deeper realities hunger for for truth hunger for the lord for his word and it's it's like a, a school it's like jesus becomes our teacher now because we're we're sitting down where we have our pen and paper out we're in the classroom and it's all up to jesus now because we have decided to go to school we've we've created that school space so jesus here i am it's up to you now lord i'm quiet i've my pen and paper out i have my bible I'm giving you this time, Lord, this morning. I'm creating this desert space and whether I'm bored or whether I'm interested, it, it doesn't matter. Again, I'm just sharing it's not about feelings it's about quietness and space and prayer and um, you know a desert can be a sticky place and a hot place and an uncomfortable and the sand is getting in in between your feet and you're inside your clothes and it's sticky and um I'm just saying that we may struggle in our desert and that's okay too. What is important, we're, we're here. And we're here so that again, we can be thought by the master. His desire that we would perceive his presence, we would recognize that he's already here. He's present. He's beside us. It's such a wonderful, you know, even no matter how we feel, even if we've distanced ourselves from him to our faults or you know, his light still exists in our lives, is 
never left us, never, never gone away from us. He's always close. And he wills that we um, perceive him and that we would open up to him joyfully. Jesus is always joy. He's always the solution. He's, oh, you can't go wrong with prayer. You can't go wrong when you go to Jesus because whatever you feel, he is going to give you what you want. Actually, not only what you want, what you need, what is the most necessary. No matter how hard you get to find it, he is the antidote to your pain and your suffering. And his desire is that we would find him, seek me, Jesus said, and you will find me. Knock. The door will be opened. Ask. Ask for whatever you need and you will receive it. He's there at the door knocking. And he wants to stay with us. He wants to, oh, especially today and Fridays, it's it's such a wonderful opportunity to, to fast, to deprive ourselves, not only of food, but I'm talking about television, I'm talking about you can create your desert at the breakfast table. When you go down, don't turn on the radio. Don't check your emails. Don't um, put on your computer. Stay at the table at dinner, at the breakfast table with your cup of tea and just stay in, th in your desert. Create your desert and sit down there in that school of life. We go for a walk, but leave your mobile in the house, just have your rosary beads. Ultimately, friends, what the Lord wants to do in this space is to recreate those ties of friendship and trust and um, reliance upon the Lord. I am sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient. He wants us to, to drink from him so that we would be satisfied and recognize and just to trust in his promises. The promises that he has for us. This is where we find our nourishment. So we come to the water to drink, you who are thirsty, Jesus, or the, the, the psalm says, though you have no money, come and drink. You will be refreshed. Why spend your money on what cannot fill the emptiness deep in your heart? Listen to my word. Come to my word, to my, to drink from me. You will enjoy goodness and peace in your heart.
knowing this goodness of the Lord, his care and his love. So wonderful he is, you know, um, you know, that that trust, that faith that we we are called to have it, you know, it can be undermined, it can be because of our our blindness, because of our our fears, our anxieties, you know, because we we give in to evil and its lies, we kind of we undermine our vision or we become blind and Our faith is kind of taken from us by the enemy, really. And so we find ourselves. I suppose we're in a storm in the desert. We may be even in the desert, but we, we can't see. We're just walking a aimlessly, not knowing where we're going. And, you know, that can be our experience. We can be just going through the motions and we're not aware of God and it can be because of sin, it can be the evil, the distractions, it can be busyness, it can be the evil environment you're in, like the world is not perfect, it's dysfunctional and people are dysfunctional, people will pull the rug from under you, they'll insult you and distract you and Satan uses other people to pull you up. He's he's no fool. And yet the Lord you know that the faith is always stepping stone to freedom and new life as we believe in Jesus and in his power and his love. He really is, as I said, the antidote. Um, you know, his love is there. His, his forgive, his mercy, his forgiveness. Um, We can we can say Jesus is all these things, but until we actually submit to him, until we really believe in him, really trust, you know, that's actually a work. It's it's a praxis. It's an exegesis that we have to participate in. We have to. It's our way out of the the mud and the mire and. The, the, the drowning, it gets us out of all of it as we surrender, as we. It's just the, the, the truth being. You know, God said, I love you and I am constant in my affection for you. You are precious to me, you know, I'm. Come to me. Um, I'm just sharing, you know, the heart of the sacred heart of Jesus. It's always open. I can always enter. And it's open for one reason alone is so that he can absorb. You know, he was wounded. That heart was hurt. It suffers so that it suffered from one reason only to, to to take away my sin. You see why Jesus had to suffer. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus suffered to take away my sin. He died for me. To, he absorbed. It's like a sponge. He soaked it all up. Sin and death. So we come to the heart of Jesus. The only function 
that Jesus wants to do is to to receive all that suffering. He wants to soak it up from us. It's like we're just coming to him and he's receiving our pain. Every every fear that we have, every suffering, every trial that we have to go through. He said, come to me, John, if you labor and are burdened by your sin, give it to me. I will give you rest. I will give you peace because I am your peace. I am the medicine you're looking for. The antidote to every pain, to every suffering. I know you true and true. I know what you're going through. You know, it really is what happens when we realize, I think I shared this last night, when when we experience forgiveness and mercy of when we when we touch Jesus, when we touch his wounds. When we tap into that reservoir of, of healing and bliss, what happens is we suddenly come to the Father. It's like an experience of being embraced by our eternal father, our heavenly father. It's it's the prodigal son moment, isn't it? When the, the son the, the son is just going back and he's sorry he's his sin and he but he comes back and that's an encounter with Jesus, but it brings us to an encounter with the Father. That Father rushes to us and because we go to Jesus, it's our way to the the Father, isn't it? It's our way to the embrace. As his arms are extended towards us like a father, that he may embrace us and just reveal again the, how important we are to him. How much he loves us and cares for his children that we are, his sons and daughters. And this is um, this is the work of a Christian. This is what a Christian does. This is how a Christian lives. It it's constantly converting. It's it's like it's like a bee works all day, flying around looking for pollen from the flowers. It's it's a busy bee. It's working. It's a working a working bee. Goes back to the hive leaves it there goes off again this is how we are bees how we work our job is to to convert to to turn from fear to turn from sin you see god's plan is that we have there's bees making pollinating nature and going to their hives that's the plan of god nature does what it is but god's plan for humanity is that we would 
grow. We would learn of God. We would grow in our faith every day. And the mystery of it all is, is that God uses evil. He, he's using this broken world to change us, to form us. So it is a mystery that God would allow suffering. He would allow pain. He would allow me to fall in temptations. But it's his way ultimately of trying me to, to make me strong in faith. It's, it's like a, I'm using a muscle of, of virtues and I'm practicing my faith, my hope. I'm loving, I'm serving, I'm living the gospel. I'm living the beatitudes of poverty and meekness and mercy and resolve and, and being persecuted and I'm putting up, but I'm going, I'm working, I'm working. And I think the greatest joy of all, even though it's not easy, but just to have that awareness that I am in the will of God. I am, I am about the work of the Lord. I am servant. Behold your servant. Let it be done to me according to your word. Our Blessed Mother, what a worker she was. She was so open to the plan of God. She put up with every trial, every suffering. She was even at the cross. Her son, as he was torn apart by humanity on the cross and the sufferings. And she trusted through it all. And even if though there was a great suffering, there was a joy of knowing that this is the will of the Father. This is the plan for my life. I think our greatest joy is being at home with the Lord, in, with the Father, in, his, in that embrace and in the presence of Jesus and, you know, knowing that he is our brother, he's our saviour. And that we can just give it all to him, surrender our lives to him. Trust in him. Just allow him to, allow the Lord to take us by the hand and lead us and guide us. And the great surprise, I think, of all of it is that when we do surrender, we do accept our crosses. And we say yes, like Our Lady. We make, when we let faith take over, the, the sufferings, they lose their power, the evil. It's gone. It's like, even though I'm, I seem to be doing this work and carrying a cross, but it, I don't feel the weight of it. I don't, it's like, surrendered it, all my fears and my pain disappear because my heart is now, it's, it's like putty in the hands of the Lord. He can mold me as he wants. He can do what he likes with me. My life is in your hands, Jesus. I accept everything. I am with you now, Jesus, for today. It's a misadventure. You are Lord, you are my Lord. Oh, friends, this trusting, it just opens us up to so many blessings, so much treasure, so much life. The 
Lord can work so much in us. So who trusts all those obstacles are removed. We have freedom. We turn, friends, to our gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. From uh, Luke's gospel. Chapter 8. We, we listen now. Jesus made his way through towns and villages preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And with him went the twelve, as well as certain women who had been cured of evil spirits and ailments. Mary, surnamed the Magdalene, <clears throat> from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna and several others who provided for them out of their own resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Jesus made his way through towns and villages, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And with him went the twelve, as well as certain women who had been cured of evil spirits and ailments. Mary, surnamed the Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. Susanna and several others who provided for them out of their own resources. If someone else wanted to read the gospel just once more, it's short enough there. Be nice to hear it again. Jesus made his way through towns and villages preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. With him went the twelve, as well as certain women who had been cured of evil spirits and ailments. Mary surnamed the Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod Stuart, Chusa, Susanna, and several others who provided for them out of their own resources. This is the word. This is the Gospel of the Lord. have a couple of minutes uh, this morning just if anybody wanted to share anything may have struck them through this morning just wanted to share something and <clears throat> maybe in the light of the gospel just struck a chord with you just anything it's just amazing how the holy spirit just Oh, I never thought of that before. Maybe the Lord is asking this of me today. 
It could be anything. Just to share it with the group is good. <clears throat> Encourages. And I was just thinking of all the women that were following Jesus. And uh, I just the names there struck me. I hadn't I didn't they didn't strike me before. Joanna and Susanna. I was and the other women. I was just thinking, I wonder what their stories were. That's all I was thinking there, Father John. Thanks. Thanks Sabina. Yeah, there's a lot of them, wasn't there? There's nearly more of them than there was disciples. The 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 twelve men, which is interesting. I was just thinking by the grace of God that I was rescued from New Age, the seven demons. Praise the Lord, you know. Yeah. Praise God. Good morning, Father John. Good morning, all. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Um, thank you for that wonderful meditation. And uh, for me, it's it's the the overall message is to trust, entrust everything to Jesus, and trust completely in Him. Uh, you know, He's walking with us in every moment and every aspect of our lives. And uh, I, I just link uh, to the gospel and the um, the women and the disciples who are walking with Jesus. Uh, could, I, could I just uh, mention, maybe ask your, your prayers or to unite in prayer with us. I'm part of a, a group who are we're on their, our third day of fast. It's, it's a fast for Ireland in reparation for all the unborn babies who have died through abortion. Um, we we're, we're um, our priests in our local parishes are uh, you know are united and offering the masses and uh, their masses and uh, reciting some of the prayers and that. And uh, tonight we have we have a holy hour from seven to eight. Uh, we'll mass at seven and the holy hour afterwards, and then we have an all night vigil. So, um, just a request if you could unite somewhat spiritually uh, with that um, with that intention uh, of reparation for the for the the heinous crime of abortion, and um, unite really somewhat with the women in in the mentioned in the gospel who who have been delivered, and you know pray that. Our country and our women and our our people be delivered from that demon of abortion. 
Thank you, Father John. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Bridget, for sharing that and bringing all these intentions now in our hearts today. <clears throat> Any final comment from anybody just before we? So um, <clears throat> we just thank the Lord and for all he's doing in our lives and and we as we and today we just pray for the grace and the courage and the strength to to stay in his will to stay in the desert to be afraid because it is a place of blessedness so lord we just pray for the gift of faith today to trust in your plan and just to be available to be open that we may learn what life is about, the meaning of life. That we may learn to trust you, and to abandon ourselves to your action. That you may live and move in us. You may have your way with us. Lord, have your way in me today. Let it be done to me according to your word. May Almighty God bless us now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for everyone for sharing, lovely sharings. And um, we look forward to connecting again. Please, God, have a blessed Friday now. God bless you. Bye now. Bye, Father. Thank you. Thanks to Bye. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks God bless everybody. God bless. Father, God bless. Bye bye. Soon and Mary. Bye bye now. I know. Bye. bye. Bye, Father. Thank you. Have a blessed day. God bless. Thanks. Thanks, Bridget. God bless you. I'll be thinking of you today. Thank you. Thank bye you, Father. Bye bye. And tonight. Yeah, I will indeed. Yeah.